before we move on to look at our DC analysis of BJTs and eventually our DC biasing of our BJTs, I want to talk about one non-ideal effect, which is called the early effect. So in the previous video, we saw our IV curves, our current voltage curves, and we said ideally in the forward active mode, those curves are going to be horizontal. However, that's not actually the case. In reality, we have something called base width modulation, and we're not going to go into the details of physically what's happening there, but essentially, as the name implies, our base, our base width is changing slightly, and ultimately that leads to our early effect, and sort of the bottom line is that we're going to have some dependence of our current on the voltage. So dependence of IC on our collector emitter voltage. And so what that looks like in terms of our IV curves is we're going to have something like this. So notice our blue curves now in our forward active mode, which is in this region here, uh, no longer are horizontal. And so what we can see is actually if we extrapolate these back to some point on our voltage axis, we, we see that they all intersect the axis at the same point. And so this point is related to a special value called the early voltage, which we can use to sort of characterize the effects. So this value here where they all intersect the x-axis would be negative VA, and the positive value VA is our early voltage. And again, that value of early voltage is positive. So for instance, just to give you a rough idea, maybe our VA is 100 volts. So that means the intersection of the x-axis here would be occurring at negative 100. So an important parameter that we're gonna to come to a little later on is something called our output resistance. And so our output resistance is related to the slope of these curves here. So our slope is equal to one over R naught. And we're gonna come up with sort of a more exact uh, equation for our R naught by considering sort of an adapted equation for our collector current. So our collector current before we said was IC is equal to IS, some reverse saturation current, times the exponential of VBE divided by our thermal voltage VT. So we're, again, we're not gonna go through the analysis, but it turns out with this early effect, we can add this term. So we multiply that by one plus, and so we're essentially adding this term VCE over VA, where VA is this early voltage that we've just introduced here. And so ultimately what this term does is now we see our IC has dependence on VCE where it did not before. And so if we wanna find an expression for the slope of this curve, what we can do is we can say, well, that's just the partial derivative of our current with respect to that voltage VCE. So we can say our partial of IC with respect to our VCE, but we do have to make one other sort of uh, stipulation here is that we have to have a constant VBE. In other words, we have to be on one of these particular curves because we notice that the different curves have different slopes. So we're gonna limit it and say this partial derivative for some constant VBE. And so what we could do is if we take the derivative of this up here and we call this our ICQ, and we'll get to it sort of more about that a little bit later, um, but that's gonna be our quiescent collector current. We could say that this partial derivative is equal to one over R naught by definition. Uh, so just sort of from the slope definition here. So combining those two equations, what we get is that our R naught is equal to approximately our VA divided by our ICQ. And again, our ICQ, we'll, we'll deal with this a little bit later on, but this is something called our quiescent collector current. We can think about that as sort of our, our standard value of our collector current prior to considering that early voltage. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna deal with this output resistance a lot more in a later unit where we're looking at BJT amplifiers, but I think it's important to introduce here when we're talking about our, our family of IV curves.
There are a couple other non-ideal effects that we're not going to mention in the videos, or not covering the videos rather, but I do want to mention at least in passing. The first one is leakage currents. So of course we have various types of leakage currents in this device that we've sort of neglected as a first order approximation. And then similar to what we saw with our diodes, if we push the device too hard, we can break it. So there are various methods or mechanisms of breakdown. So we have various breakdown voltages. And so if either of those things are of interest to you, you can look on pages 298 to 301 in the textbook to go to a little, a little bit more of an idea of what's going on with those. But for our purposes, we're gonna be good with just this early effect. And in the next videos, we're gonna move into our DC analysis.